Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talking Pittsburgh on this Wednesday, June 8th, 2022. I'm Jeremy Crosby. Hope you had a wonderful day. Well, it's a wet day out there. As I'm looking, uh, as we're uh, filming this, it is uh, downboring. So, uh, well, much needed rain, I suppose. But, uh, man, it's a lot of rain. <laughs> I heard anywhere from a half an inch to an inch and a half, uh, depending where you're at. I think we're on the inch and a half side here in Pittsburgh, but that's that's just me. Uh, either way, uh, dark, dreary, wet day. We'll give away to a nice day tomorrow. Chance of rain for the weekend. We're not going to talk about that. I'm just going to have fun here today on TF. we got a lot to talk about, uh, including we'll check in with the Fitchburg Public Library. Summer reading program is off and running. We'll get a breakdown uh, coming up on that. Plus, we'll take you out to last night's art showcase. It returned to Promega. And we'll uh, take you out there if you didn't have a chance to check that out uh, last night and introduce you to some of the artists and, of course, take you out to see some of the cool art that's out there at the gallery. But first, we do turn to the headlines and we start with the Madison Metro. That's Metro Transit now, formerly known as Mad Madison Metro, had proved the redesign last night. Metro redesign approved. The Common Council of City of Madison approves Metro Transit Network design plan with amendments. This was uh, uh, posted up uh, this morning uh, around uh, 6. After almost 60 public meetings, the Common Council of City of Madison approved the Medis uh, Metro Transit Network design. The plan had been previously amended and passed by the Transportation Policy and Planning Board and passed by Council with no further changes. A revised map with the amendment showing the final configuration uh, are being shown here as Andrew is going through that. And uh, of course, uh, we'll uh, update you uh, when this comes up. Doesn't take effect till late. I, I believe it was June next year, if I remember right, of 2023. We'll keep you up to date uh, as that gets closer. Other news, we've got the Fitchburg Farmers Market coming up tomorrow. They're expecting some great weather, and uh, we want you to stop on out there 3 to 6 p.m. every Thursday at the Agora Pavilion. It's the big tent. It looks so cool. 5500 East Cheryl Parkway here in Fitchburg. This community market was la launched back in 1996 and steadily has been growing in size, diversity, and uh, everything else in between. Shoppers can stroll through abundance of uh, seasons of color and vibrance. And of course, checking out those average of 25 uh, local vendors from all across southern Wisconsin, selling everything from flowers, baked goods, and so much more. And uh, the one that I'm interested in is that pre the prepackaged meals. Sounds very interesting. And of course, the market features each and every month uh, live music and demonstrations. Strawberry Fest coming up already next week. So it's the first uh, kickoff uh, summer event uh, for the farmer's market. All right, turning our attention to a car seat clinic and vehicle inspections. We told about this yesterday, but it's coming up. Want to make sure you get it on your calendar. This car seat clinic and vehicle inspection uh, will be held on Tuesday, June 14th from 4 to 7 p.m. So it's located at 1905. West Beltline Highway in Madison. Stop on out. Not only will you have the car seat clinic and vehicle expansion, but they'll uh, also have activities for the entire family. It's all free of charge, put on by the great sponsors there on your screen. Also have the next used book sale coming up. Get this on your calendar. It's June 16th through the 18th. We are uh, planning the largest sale of history for the library. If that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. The pre-sale event, by the way, is for the friends of the Fitch Republic Library. It's 4 to 6 on June 16th. Enjoy wine and cheese while browsing some book sales and uh, reconnecting with friends. The public sale uh, is starting on June 17th. That's uh, from noon to 5, June 18th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. with the bag sale, 2 to 4 p.m., which is probably the best deal you could find here in Wisconsin for books. And, of course, this all includes you see these DVDs everything for you and they're also looking for donations so if you are interested in donating same deal or accepting use books cds dvds uh, and you can drop those off during the library regular hours remember it's got to be in good condition free of damage excess dirt odor mold and markings dvd cds and blu-rays should be in good condition and no they don't take textbooks they don't take vhs tapes toys games books with water damage or excessive wear or other damage or like the so don't, no, not happening. 
All right, moving on. Uh, youth programs, uh, fun youth programs out at Hugo James Sound Park this summer. Check it out. Uh, these are led by a trained staff, a member of CI Pediatric Therapy Center, and are designed for kids of all abilities. More uh, information and program registration is at Fitchburg Recreation uh, website. That's at fitchburgwi.gov backslash recreation. You got Nature Explorers, Crafts with Crafty Kids, and Magnificent Editions. All of these uh, on your screen, again, you have to sign up for. You can register through the city's website, pitchforwi.gov backslash uh, recreation. All right, that does it for our headlines. Coming up next, we open up the digest. We're going to be taking you or talking to you about uh, summer reading with the Pittsburgh Public Library. And later, we'll go out to Promega for the art showcase. It's back. Let's preview that or take you out to that. Coming up next right here on Talking Pittsburgh. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus. So follow guidance from authorities where you live and stay home unless absolutely necessary. Use a delivery service for essential items like food and medicine. If you must make essential trips, stay six feet apart from other people. Wear a cloth face covering and wash your hands for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe. Start your plan today at ready.gov plan. Hey, boss. Okay. I said I'm fine. Me to bed, see you in the morning. With the first deed, Superman, but it wasn't on it. And we lost it. In my head, in my head, in my head. We were on the left, in my head. Hey, son. Hey, Bob. You know you can talk to me. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. Ready! That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. And especially this year, no one has time to get sick. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me from the Fitchburg Public Library, we've got Kristen and Minda here with us, and uh, we're happy to have you here a little bit later, which is okay. We still got some great events to tell you about, uh, and uh, it's an exciting time at the library because it is the summer reading program is kicked off and ready to roll. And these are the two people you want to talk to when it comes to summer reading. Uh, Kristen, we'll start with you. Uh, tell us what's uh, the theme of the summer reading program and uh, what's it all about? Great, yeah, the theme this year is Oceans of Possibility. So if you come in and see us, we're all decked out with decorations. It's a lot of fun. There's a giant squid and dolphins and all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, a lot of the programs are gonna be ocean themed. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. So this year, again, we are using Beanstack, which is a uh, way to track your reading online. So there are links on our website. We have links from Facebook. We have, um, paper versions for the kids to do, to do, but we, um, in order to earn the prizes, um, you will have to participate on the Beanstack app as well. And on the back of all of our paper options, there is instructions for how to go onto Beanstack as well. Always feel free to come up to the desk and ask us how it works, all that kind of stuff. But we're really excited. Um, we have awesome prizes this year. There's again, ice cream from the chocolate shop, there's coupons to do things all around town, um, like Mallard's Games, Eichster's Farm. Um, there are free books, which are always one of the best things. And then there are grand prizes. So if you finish the whole thing, you'll be entered to win, um, if you're in the younger crowd, gift card from Target, the older crowd, um, some Nintendo Switches. So that's a lot of fun. And we also have a number of performers coming this summer. So kind of nice we get to see you all again we get to have in-person programming and performers which is a lot of fun um, we have a magician coming we have great scott on june 14th 
And all of these, all of our performers are on Tuesdays at two o'clock, kind of an every other week thing. So starting, actually our kickoff is Friday. We will have um, Haven's Petting Farm starting at 10 o'clock. So come see us on Friday, but also um, June 14th, we've got magician, great Scott. Um, June 28th, we have Mr. Steve who does musical comedy. Um, in July on the 12th, we have the Dane County Trash Lab, which is an awesome Ooh, this trailer. That they thing pull is in. amazing. Oh yeah. They that have like interactive awesome. displays you can look at and tell you all kinds of your the impact of trash right here in Dane County. So that'll be really exciting and really informative. And then July 26th, we have um, the drum circle with Elmore Lawson, which is you can come and drum yourself as well. So lots of fun. Yeah, those are just a few of the things we've got going on, all kinds of programs. Make sure you check the library calendar. We have ones printed in the library you can pick up, or you can always check our website. And Chris, why is it so important that, uh, why do you do the reading program every summer, first off? I mean, why is it so important to to keep up that, uh, the spirit of reading and and sure. read? So every summer we go through what we like to call the dreaded summer slide. <laughs> so if we don't keep up reading during the summer, often where you leave off at school, you might end up at a lower reading level when you start back again than where you left off. So if we keep up reading all summer long, you'll stay on target, maybe even advance from there. So yeah, yeah. and you can read anything. Read, you can listen to audiobooks, read magazines, you know, there's all kinds of things, comics, graphic novels, anything you want, read the back of your cereal box, just keep reading. And you've ensured me that I cannot uh, qualify for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, it, you said it was the beard. Like maybe if I got rid of the beard, I'd qualify as the in the teen section. I'm not sure we would uh, mistake you for a teen, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, awesome. I love the summer reading program. And I also love this uh, community outreach. And Minda, uh, you've been brought on board uh, to do just that. Uh, you'll be uh, hitting the road this summer, bringing uh, the activities uh, to folks uh, across the city. Uh, tell us what you got in store. Well, one thing to remember, too, is reading is fun. So that's always a good reason to I participate guess, also. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this summer, we're going to be out in the parks with pop-up libraries. That's actually going to start on June 13th, and that goes through August 11th, uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. We're at certain libraries in the afternoon from 2 to 3 p.m. You can check the library website to see where we're going to be, and we're going to have stories, activities, and crafts. Um, and so there are going to be a lot of activity at the at these pop up libraries. Uh, we'll have um, different kinds of we'll have music. Um, I'm going to have some story time, uh, and it's just going to be fun. Also, just a way to engage with the library, and that's in um, the city of Fitchburg. And then also we'll be in one of the town of Madison parks as well. And we also are starting to bring uh, our book club out of the library, back outside the library again, starting in July. It's going to meet the second Wednesday of the month, and it's from 6.30 until 7.30 p.m., and it's going to be at Barrique's. So we're really Ooh. excited to start that up again to have uh, its book club at the cafe. Yeah, that's a lot of fun, uh, certainly. And uh, activities in the park, uh, you're going to have, you can have crafts, you can have reading, you can uh, sing. It, it sounds like it's a little bit of everything. It is. I mean, we're going to have some really fun, messy crafts, some science related Ooh. things where uh, when you're outside, you get to make a mess. And that's a whole lot of fun. And that's part of learning and exploring and engaging and learning new things. And it's, you know, and we'll probably have some songs, that's for sure. Um, I'm going to do some story times. Uh, the crafts you should be able to take, the kids should be able to take what they make. And, you know, then we're going to play games too, just different kinds of movement and all kinds of things that we like to do at the park. Wait, you're telling me, both of you, that it's fun at the library? Is that what I'm hearing? Always. <laughs> you bet. I should know better, right? Uh, well, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Minda, where can people stay up uh, where you're going to be at as far as the, the summer goes? So where can people find more information uh, on those dates? So the library website on the library calendar will list all the parks that we're at and the times with their address. Uh, we also have um, brochures in the library. 
uh, we're running it on our, if you come in, we have the monitors. If you watch the monitors, it will tell us where we're at. Um, the main parks that we're going to be at are um, Aldo Leopold, Southdale, and then Hegel Jamestown. But we also have some Fitchburg Park, Swan Creek, Tower Creek, and McKee Kids Crossing that we'll be at in June. Fantastic. Well, thank you both so much. Uh, summer reading is off and running. Get on uh, Beanstack. I always want to say Beanstalk, by the way. No. Uh, it, like it seems like it should be that to give them the library. It but, tries uh, to autocorrect every time. So. I was gonna, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, probably really true there. Uh, but either way, thank you both so much for your time. Look forward to seeing you out uh, at all these great events. And they're looking forward to seeing you out there as well. We are. Thanks for having us. Yep. Thanks for having us. You bet. Uh, you can check out the city's website, then click on the library, follow them on social media, and of course, say hi when you're out there uh, at all these fun events in the park. And of course, document, document, document. So you win some fabulous prizes from the library. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Fitchburg. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So follow guidance from authorities where you live and do your part. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household, but phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit any social gathering. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. Brandon met a girl on a dating app. He finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. She must be a keeper. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. We don't have time for delays. Ready! We don't have time for spills. Next. We don't have time for setbacks. Let's be real. Getting the flu shot? Helps you fight the flu. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you too. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. We're in the guest segment and today. We're going to be taking you out to the Promega's Art Showcase happening last night with the kickoff of the symposium and the uh, open house uh, format. Nice to see them return. It's been a few years, but we're glad to have this in our city. And in case you missed it, we have the coverage for you right now. <laughs> I make art because it's me. Um, it's it's part of my being. It's this this yearning that I have and I always had to to create to create things with my hands to create something that was not there before to pull it out of thin air, put elements together, whether it is paints or knitting pieces or you know creating silks. It's for me, it's just such a joy to, to do that. I was an art comic, comic kid growing up and then I took a lot of art classes in high school and art classes in high school, you know, transitioned to art school. And so it was kind of a long lineage of being really art invested. I think maybe part of the Sharpie was watching my kids draw, you know, with magic markers and realizing how efficient pen, pens were amongst all the art materials that are available. I also had a few years of working in a um, copy shop, like a Kinko's, and so office supplies were sort of standard, standard issue office supplies became part of my working vocabulary. My work is really about color and light and, and movement. There's a lot of movement. I, I don't paint off of pictures or photography. I really paint the live flowers as I see them, and um, I enjoy 
the movement of the petals and nothing is really stagnant everything is constantly in motion and and i love i love working with that with my art yeah i think there's a sort of a tension between black and white work and gray work and then color work and i always want to weigh a little bit more on the color work but the black and white work's really important to me as well i i I'm, my hope is that the color is really radiant that the color um i guess there's a few things that i'm going for but i want the color to be really bright I want it to be um, buoyant, like joyful. I want it to carry kind of a certain amount of energy. I would describe the color as trying to move towards some kind of ecstatic state, like, you know, very happy. This is, the title is Elysian Flowers, like uh, flowers of the gods, if you, if you want. And I love painting flowers. And so these are flowers, among my favorites, Lysianthus flowers. And I love to, to make them big in my in my canvas and really dive in and what I love here also is the contrast the whites and the purples and here also are gold one of the pens that I'll use one of the instruments that I use or one of the tools pens that I use um, kind of in contrast to the sharpie fine liner pen is a reed pen like a stick carved uh, reed like a bamboo reed that's been been carved in a certain way and those reed pens are really beautiful because um, you can't, they're hard to control. So the ink sort of runs out of it and drips out of it and kind of, and it's hard to sort of, un, it's hard to know what the ink's gonna do. And that whole series of drawings on index paper is very much about that sort of balance of control and chaos and finding a line that sort of runs in a lot of different directions. And so I, it's important for me to have that as part of my regular drawing routine is that that instrument as well. Well, there are different pieces in the exhibit. Um, as far as the abstracts go, I would say take a peek at Angel by My Side. It's an abstract painting. It's very recent. I just basically finished it. And it's a large abstract where I just let the colors flow and blend. And it's a lot of sunset pinks and oranges and gold. I love also painting with metallic gold and I added that it just gives such a warmth to it. So I, I really like this one a lot. Yeah, probably that big orange piece with the flower that's down in the lobby. That's the one that, um, that was a last minute addition to the, to the show. And it's one that came right out of our, of our living room at our house. So it's one that I live with. And if, that, if there's one piece in the show that would be not for sale, it might be that piece. So. It's, it's like, I just know when a painting is done. You know, very often I will be in a place where it's like, oh, oh, like I'm not done yet, yet. Um, I'm not sure what else does the painting require. So it's like, it's as if the energy stops moving. Right. And so what I do then is I leave the painting alone. I just, okay, I paint on, on a different painting. I very often have two or three paintings that I'm painting on simultaneously. And I give it space. I leave it alone. And, and I know that it will come to me. I see a color. I see something. And it's like, wow, that. And I go back to my painting. I add a detail or I add something. And all of a sudden, there is this piece I really, my body is peaceful all of a sudden. This, mm, it's gone. It's like, wow, okay. So I'm actually really literally breathing and there is this relaxation and a um, sort of a contentment. There's this quiet joy and I'm like, oh yeah, you are done. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Like um, sometimes it's super easy to tell because the, the painting may be set up, the painting or the drawing may be set up to be done in a certain amount of time, or there's a certain color relationship that I'm looking for. I do use, like I said in my talk, I use opaque projectors. So I will set something up and just paint, paint the mark that's been enlarged from the projector. And in that case, it's easy to know when it's done, because once the line is finished, the painting is probably done. But I have had paintings that I've worked on for a number of years that are may, maybe one or two that are still not finished. So that question is always a constant riddle, I think, in a lot of painting studios, and certainly in mine. Uh, I would say they should 
they should do all that they can to foster a space that allows for that. They should create, they should create the time and space in their, in their regular schedule to, to do the work they want to do. Um, I would say that early on that process can be a little fragile, so they may be careful in kind of fostering it. They may be careful in, in, um, in how they start. Uh, but I think a regular daily a regular daily engagement. Like if you can draw every day or if you can paint a little bit every day. Uh, I had a f mentor when I first got to UW-Madison that ha he had a great quote that he gave me. He said that you can do a lot of damage in an hour a day. As a friend said to me, Bettina, people should be able to wear your art. So that it's like, see that there, there's these, sometimes people say something to me or I might see something somewhere while I'm traveling and it inspires something in me. It's a color, it's a shape. It's a, wow, could I do this? Glorious Sunflowers is one of my oil paintings and this is actually the mother, <laughs> if I may say so, of some of my wearable art designs that are also on display. So I, I show how I paint at first a painting somewhere in a field of sunflowers, I'm out and about. So there's this oil painting and then I take the art and design on my computer, the design for the fabric. So that's another example. And then there are the silk paintings. Make sure you take a look at these. It's, they are, if a lot of people display them as banners, but they can also be worn as scarves and shawls. Yeah, one project that I'm looking forward to trying to do in the next year or two is animate some of the draw, some of the ink drawings, uh, and kind of a blunt animation of just the drawings sort of put into like iMovie right next to each other. But but the the other part of that project would be projecting them. My dream is to have a huge studio where I can really stretch large silks, sort of create a forest of silks for people to enjoy in an exhibit, you know, be, be draped on the ceiling and floating down. So that's my dream project. All right, there you have it. We'll get this posted up online. Of course, you'll be able to check out the full art showcase uh, or in uh, symposium we'll that we played here on Fact TV. We'll keep you posted on that. Take a quick break, wrap up the show next. Watch it to you. Up. See on page four that the projections need to be blood. Next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday. Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed, and for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back into Talking Pittsburgh, wrapping up the show for the day. A soggy show. I, it's just the rain just gets everybody down, you know. But don't worry, sunshine is coming back around, coming back around. It's okay. And we want to thank uh, our friends from uh, the Fitchburg Public Library for uh, telling us about summer events and Promega for inviting us out for the symposium and the art showcase. You can check that out. Just go to Promega's website for more information. Meanwhile, while you're out searching, you can see Fact TV too. It's convenient. Mm -hmm.